Rachel, thank you for being here at Define Art. It's wonderful to have your exhibition facade. It's absolutely magnificent. Thank you, it's great to be here. Just walking into the room, I mean, tell me a little bit about the title and how you curated this wonderful exhibition. Thank you. When I came to Savannah the first time to look at the museum, the SCAD Museum, and to see the city, I was taken with this idea of, um, of an aspect of what's underneath and what's on top. And I believe that there was this you know, incredible history with the antebellum South, and then with the preservation of the bricks that you did inside the museum that were made by the slaves. Mm -hmm. And this also this, this Baroque quality of all the moss and, and these beautiful, beautiful mansions that all the ironwork on the sides, this combination of, of of extremes is what really appealed to me. The facade exhibition includes work as early as 2005 and demonstrates your dexterity with multiple mediums. How did you approach the curation process? I'm definitely one a person that you could see in my work that I'm, I'm very um, exuberant. <laughs> so I wanted to do everything. I wanted to put in brightly colored things and, and Brittany Richmond was really very, very specific about saying, let's keep it all in the same type of color sequence, which I thought was very important to have the red and the black and the white, because those are basically the three colors of, of life in a lot of ways, you know? And so it was just the way we kept it together was kind of keeping it very specific on the color tones and the hues and the painting has it, the wall has it. And then the army of God is basically now, even though it's copper, it's become this fireball. <laughs> it really has. Yeah. Your panorama of Rome is a captivating homage to the Eternal City and, as you said, uses the vivid red popping against the declension of gray. Painting on mirror must present a special little challenge there. It Tell does. me about that. It does. <laughs> it really does. I think I like the mirror so much because it's not really a painting to me. It, it is a sculpture. Mm -hmm. As I'm making the painting, it's, I see all the space around me, so it becomes already three-dimensional as I'm working on it. Mirrors are very much about, even though I'm working on a flat level, which is a painting, I am inside my body because I am seeing myself making it. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, I'm not using a canvas and this experience of kind of this floppy thing. I, I'm, I'm carving in there. Yes. So basically, it's an experience that is not at all like painting. So I think painting, in my mind, is like taking a bubble bath, and sculpture is like you're out in the fields with like a Sith or something oh. or Scythe. It's like, <laughs> it's very much about expressing like all these kind of things that are going on in your body. So mm -hmm. that's why I think the mirror painting speaks to me and my working in copper and working in wood these are all experiences that you have to kind of get ready and just go at it you know the scale of your work is extraordinary yeah, as we're you. talking about thank um, you where do these big ideas come from I think that I listen to my intuition a lot that's I think a lot of the reasons why I love fairy tales and religion is this idea that there's this, this little inner voice that's just giving you little directions and you have to listen to it. You have to think that it knows what you need to do. And sometimes it's all over the place for me. And I do lots of drawings and I keep I try to keep all the ideas in a notebook or on my phone because I do believe eventually they all will be made. Intuition, I think, is often underrated. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Go with your intuition. Yes. Yes, and I think your intuition actually knows a lot more than your ego. When you look at what someone else is doing and you think that you need to be doing that, that's what's going to kill your art. You know, that's your ego talking versus what's inside. And again, like your, your intuition a lot of times will stop being worried about what you're ashamed of or what, the, you know, all those things are actually what make you who you are when it comes down to it. You gain inspiration from Renaissance, Baroque, Rococo, and neoclassical sources. How does the past provide a constant font of inspiration for you? It's interesting because in the beginning, I actually was, um, I, I pushed away art history. Coming from Miami where it had very, very little 
art historical background whatsoever, and I didn't. There was no museums there when I was a kid, and I I I thought, okay, I'm going to make art about the signpost on my street, and that was what I was doing for a couple of years, and it was cool, and actually got me in the Greater New York show, and it was it was a big foray into the art world. But then I went to see um, the Black Forest, and I went to see all these places in person, and I just had this like momentary, like, oh my gosh, like how can I just not reference this? This is the real thing. This isn't <laughs> Disney, this is the real thing. And it, it really stopped me in my tracks and made me completely change everything that I was looking at. You also have a keen interest in film, and you've built a multidisciplinary career. I just love that. I mean, Thank why you. limit yourself? Thank you. Yeah, tell me about film. So films, I think, are the best way to present a dream. Dreams are your unconscious trying to give you hints about how to do things a little differently than you're doing it in your conscious life. It's trying to get you away from thinking about like whatever it is that's on the, the facade. The facade. And you're, it's what's happening underneath. Yes. Rachel, thank you so much for being here with me and being at Define Art, being here at the SCAD Museum of Art and sharing time with our students. Thank you, thank you, Paula. It's been amazing to be here.